But it's always a challenge recording in Chicago. I'm trying to record outside because the sunlight's right. You I mean, you gotta get the right angle, the right area. But the problem I got is the wind. Now the wind is blowing like crazy. I mean, I got the nice little wind sock on there, but you still, you still don't want that wind involved in there. Uh, I do got a neat little tool. You gotta check this out. Okay, so if I hit this. the outdoor living hit it again it turns back on so i hit it again it stops i know that's like basic technology for some people but to me that's mind-blowing it makes life so much easier so now i can record with just a push button oh i'm in heaven now <laughs> Okay, so I found a not so windy spot. Uh, I'll have to take a little driving around and use some of that uh, airplane pilot knowledge that I have, uh, that I used to do a long a while back ago that I need to get back into and use some of that knowledge. Now the sunlight's so crazy, I can't even see the screen. Today's vlog is pretty much more or less like a tutorial than a vlog and I want to base this for homeowners, um, outdoor living experts, designers, uh, landscapers, paper patio guys. One of the things that I see that's going on a lot right now because of the new technology of design software with the CAD based software, the 3D software, all these nice neat software programs that you have out there, what's happening is we're starting to get a top down approach design meaning people are just looking at their paper they're looking at their sheets or looking at their designs and they're just staring down or they're kind of uh using like a drone image like the drones are some of the hit things now so everybody has a drone flying all over their patio showing everything maybe i'm a little salty because i don't have a drone yet but one day i'll get one uh flying over their patio hint hint drone companies to send me one and i'll, I'll give you a shout out but uh anyway what's happening is they're not really paying attention to spatial separations and things like that. So they're looking at the backyard, looking at the house, and they're filling in the whole entire backyard with either pavers or pools or all these hard structures. They're not really looking at spatial separation. An outdoor living sitting area doesn't need to be huge at all. I really don't have a set number. I always try to start my spaces off, no matter how big my area is, I will either try to start like a 14 by 14 or 16 by 16. Somewhere in those numbers is spread out. Really, only thing you need is a space for some tables and chairs that seat anywhere from six to eight people. And then I also always add like some seating walls and areas like that for overflow. I'm just talking about the main dining area. Then you can have offshoots so you can separate uh, your landscape design with planting, separate it with other things, not just have a big swath area then put uh, some furniture on the other side but you can have a separation of maybe a fire feature or some plantings and things like that and then you can maybe put like a couch coffee table and then your fire feature and then have another separation with your bar or your kitchenette and things like that it just helps with breaking up the space and not having these big huge spaces the tip today is spatial separation and stop designing looking down but you also sort of want to design according to a home you know we do have open air space homes but they still have some separations in the walls some separate areas people some people do like the open space but some people do like the separations and things like here and there in the air if you're separating anything at least differentiate the area so the tip today is stop just looking down stop designing down get into the world get into the design figure out the space figure out how much space people need and use and then understand space itself in general and then you'll have yourself an outdoor living design So my vlog today has turned a whole different direction. I don't know if you guys remember, but I shared a video about three weeks ago. It was something this guy said, Justin, he was talking about not chasing money and following your dreams and enjoying your experiences in life. Number one tip for an entrepreneur, successful entrepreneur like yourself. Justin, if you don't mind me saying, he's 29 years old, dude is crushing the game. <laughs> one tip, man. 
All right, so I spent the last eight years chasing money. Money is not what you should be after. It's the experience. Literally today, I have more money than I could ever imagine. That does not matter. It, do, it, it actually makes it harder. Okay, you're looking for the experience, not the money. And you will not believe it, but today, he happened to be in Chicago and he posted something on Facebook and Justin, Joel, and Emma uh, open road chronicles. They don't even have a house, guys. They roll around in this camper. That's, it's banging though. This is not just a camper. This joint is like a true house. And they roll around and they just go hang out, meet people, have business meetings and stuff like that. And you will not believe who's standing right here. Now, the universe does not make mistakes. We also had some very deep conversations for like the past three, four hours just about life in general. We got more in depth. I didn't do any vlogging on that because it was so real. You don't want a camera on that. But we were talking about how I'll let you say it, Justin. We were talking about what friends and things like that. Yeah, we were talking about friendships, talking about just how money works, artificial intelligence, where the world's going, everything. It was mind blowing. And, and by the way, by the way, really quick, I love how you're recording on a phone right now. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I just got rid of all of my camera equipment, everything that I own. Really? When it comes to cameras, I got rid of a, a Canon 60 Mark II, a 15 to 35 millimeter lens, an 85 millimeter lens. All that stuff, returned it all, just so I could use my phone because I believe that's the future. You're not supposed to tell them I was on the phone, bro. They think I got this big badass camera. <laughs> <laughs> it is a badass camera. That's awesome. All right, so in 2010, I made 23 cents online. And what I learned over the last, uh, it's been eight years now, is that it wasn't really about the money. The money is not what I remember making. It was the experience that I had immediately after I found out that I made 23 cents online, okay? I went running up and down the street <laughs> telling all my friends, all my family that I just made 23 cents online and everybody told me, you're crazy. What's wrong with you? You made 23 cents, go get a job, <laughs> right? And I remember I was just like, I don't need a job. I'm gonna make this work. <laughs> You're gonna make it work. I made a hundred bucks. I, if I can find that picture, I'm gonna throw it up here. But I took the photo and sent it to my buddy Lamont in Ohio. I'm like, dude, I just made a hundred bucks. I was like, I don't know, out of all this money that I've made in my businesses and all my life, the fact that I made a hundred bucks by just putting ads on this webpage, and I kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and finally built up, and they sent me a check for a hundred bucks. It took a year to do it. it. Took one year. So if you add up the amount of money I made per hour, it'd probably be. <laughs> 12 cents an hour, <laughs> $100 was more important than any money I've ever made. Because <laughs> it was about the experience. It was the experience. Yeah. Now it makes sense from what you said when I saw you and that's how we ended up meeting. Yeah, man, that's It's crazy. Awesome. Universe doesn't make any mistakes. <laughs>